It is 6.25 a.m. on day six. Again, they're going to call this day seven. I'm going to call this day six. And we are leaving the boat. And fortunately, even though it's 6.25 a.m., we get to sleep for a bit more today because we've got a three and a half hour ride each way to Abu Simbel, which is like a really famous for movies and TV shows temple. I guarantee you, you go, oh, I know the front of that. Because when I saw a picture, I was like, oh, I know the front of that. So it's time to actually catch up on some sleep on the bus ride. And then uh, I'll be back with you when we hit Abu Simbel. Or maybe I heard that there's a rest stop half the way there. That's kind of an interesting rest stop. So, you know, if it's interesting, we'll join along for that. If not, through t editing magic, you'll see me three hours later in Abu Simbel. So, boom! Coming to you now from the middle of bumfuck Egypt. This is the actual location. It's kind of an oasis in the desert. If you watch this channel a lot, this is so far out, there's no utilities. There's actually just solar power right here that's running all of it. And we are at an oasis in the desert, which is serving coffee and chips and other snacks. I got a chocolate bar. I got a white chocolate bar. I got some, believe it or not, Worcestershire sauce chips. And what? That'll be fun to show. And some chili lime chips. But literally, I mean, if, if you could define where we are, it, number one, it's an oasis, because you see there's the oasis in the middle of the desert. But I want to walk out because this is the only, well, this is the longest navigable road in Egypt that we're on right now on the way to Abu Simbel, which goes from Aswan to Abu Simbel, and we are in the desert. <laughs> we are, <laughs> when they ask where it is, I'm going to go get my 360 camera so I can show you all. This is the pure definition. I, I, I'm, I'm going to curse again in this video because I'm, I, I mean, this is the middle of bunkfucked Egypt. Uh, I mean, look, nothing but desert, 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 desert. This is the one road that runs there and it's it's a very 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 rough ride in the back of the bus uh it is starting to get hot it is uh 8 45 uh it, from the actual middle of bumfuck egypt uh on our way to uh, abu Simbel, and i'm pretty sure that you can fry an egg on this road i mean this is just <clears throat> Kind of crazy, no cell service, no connectivity, no power, nothing. Just pure, unadulterated, bum fuck Egypt. And that is where the term actually comes from. Pretty cool, right? I think it's pretty cool. Catch you at Double Symbol. We finally got to the uh, temple in Abu Simul of uh, Ramses II. And I will tell you what's nice is it is quiet here and it is fascinating. This is actually the sanctuary room that only the kings and the priests could go into. And this may be where the statue came on to the sanctuary room. But when you see the inside of this and the details that are in here, I'm gonna take you outside in a second too. But if you look at the details here, the details here, oh, there's a bird. The details here are quite amazing. And there's some scenes here in this temple. I don't know how dark it is uh, that you can see. There's some scenes here in this temple that are like straight out of classic Egyptian movies, Egyptian tropes. Uh, this one, if you can see, this is the uh, fertility god. It is a little bit dark. Uh, I'm gonna do something I probably shouldn't do, but uh, we'll throw a little flash up. It's a little bit dark. And you'll see his uh, m member right there from the fertility god. Uh, and you can just kind of see the details. But I will tell you, the most, well, the second most impressive thing is this next room. I know it's very dark. We're in a temple right now. But this is going to, this is going to brighten up pretty dramatically. It's all natural light in here. There's a little bit of light in the side. But this room right here. 
with the full size King Ramsey the seconds. So there are eight of them in here. And this was actually fully relocated. It was much lower on the mountain where it was. So they cut it up and they had to rebuild it. But you'll see all these temple guards right here. Got some great 360 content coming out that's gonna give you a much better perspective of this. But just, wow, incredible. Let me turn around so we're not going right at the sunlight. And you might be like, oh, there you go. You can see those temple guards a lot better there. And I mean, it looks like it was built, again, for a movie set, but even more impressive than the temple guards right there. Now, this is an additional excursion. I think it was like $175 additional on top of the tour. Uh, so this is an additional excursion, uh, mainly because of the bus. And sometimes I was just told by the guide that they'll do a flight out here instead to save time because you do waste half the day on the bus just getting here from anywhere. And that was because this god wanted to make sure that when people came to see this temple, they were coming to see this temple. So, uh, but the facade here, you'll see as we walk away. I'll turn you around in a second. There are four giant statues, which have been reduced to kind of three and a half giant statues that are um, representing Ramses II. And if I flip him around here, you'll see probably the most impressive sight in all of Egypt right here. This giant facade right there with four gods, well, four kings that thought they were gods. And uh, one of them, their head fell off and everything, but they actually sectioned this and they moved it up because when the Nile went up, this would have all been underwater. So they actually moved it all the way up and um, what's really interesting is right next door, where we're gonna go next, they have uh, his wife's, uh, which uh, one of his wife's, uh, these guys all had multiple wives, but this is the uh, temple of Queen Nefertiti we're gonna go to next. This is Ramses II, again, just look at that, look at that facade right there. It really is quite amazing. Let's go check out Queen Nefertiti's facade. Next, not her tomb, because her tomb cost a fortune to get into. But let's check out her facade. But I do think that since this is so remote, I'll tell you, this is probably the best, the best archaeological site we've been to by far. Uh, and there's nobody here, relatively, because we're early and it's really far away. So, yes, getting up at the uh, ass crack of 6 a.m. of dawn was actually a good thing here today. From the first most impressive facade we've seen well, since we've been in Egypt to the second most impressive facade, I've not even been inside this one yet. This is the temple for Queen Nefertiti. And you can see this facade, about 50 feet tall, I'd say. You've got these statues uh, protecting the queen, but in just absolutely amazing shape, carved into the side of a mountain. Uh, we're gonna go in together. I don't know how well lit it's gonna be or anything like that because I literally haven't been in yet. Wish I would have seen this one first, then it would have been the most impressive, then I would have one-upped it, but we went the other way around. So, oh. You can see all these different drawings in here. And you can see the appearance of the cow goddess and just how well all this is preserved. You're actually probably seeing it better than my eyes are right now because I was just outside in the bright sunlight. So, good on you. But we're walking back. And there is the sanctuary. Overall, this seems a lot smaller than some of the other temples we've been into. Yeah. But, no, no, I'm saying even the other one was a lot smaller than some of the other temples we've been into well, overall. The statues are the big thing. The statues are the big thing. I'm yeah. just saying the inside. Hey, look, modern electrical wiring. But uh, really quite impressive to see. And I would say, yes, yes, it, it is worth that extra bus ride, that extra plane ride, whatever it takes to get down here to uh, Abu Simbel. But make sure that uh, you bring a snack with you because uh, there's not much here. 
an apple symbol. But you'll see all these different reliefs, different paintings. I think he's killing that guy. Um, slightly less, uh, well, <laughs> a lot less <laughs> grandiose than the last temple we were just in, but still uh, impressive of its own, especially given that uh, big old uh, relief on the front. Let's let's jump back up to the front and take a look at that uh, the relief on the front, the, uh, the entrance, the facade, whatever you want to call it there, um, just from this way. So, oh, coming down. And I will tell you, these are also the most accessible places we've been. They've built up wooden paths. There's not as many rocks and things like that. So I do have to say this is a very accessible temple. Um, both, of, both of these temples are like the most accessible things I've seen in Egypt so far. Uh, so I do kind of uh, congratulate them on that. But that's one more look at the relief. And I think we're going to get back to the bus. And look, this has been a... Uh, by the time we get back, this is like a half day to three quarters of a day adventure just to spend an hour and 20 minutes at these two temples. But uh, just the grandeur and the scale, definitely check out the 360 videos I'm going to put up because you'll see that it's uh, very much worth it. So I'm going to shoot some 360 now and I'll come back to you if I find anything else along the way. We had so much fun the first time on our way over that we had to stop by bumfuck Egypt again on the way back. And you know, one of the things I was wondering is, you know, we saw the solar power, but I was like, where do they get their panels from? Where do they get their water from? And because I'm a solar nerd, if you know this channel, I just solar powered my F-150 electric truck. And you'll see right behind me, we've got solar panels. And you know, they've got solar, they've got a water truck that's uh, connected into their toilets. They've got a satellite dish. They got a water pump. They've got everything. They're really, they really are kind of self-sustaining here in bumfuck Egypt. Uh, and uh, it's just right off the coast, uh, right off the uh, side of Interstate 75. Well, inner country, intra country. It just goes in Egypt. Uh, 75 right here. And you'll see it's a lot quieter in the afternoon, but here is the interstate right here the police have shown up uh, and there's just a little thatch hut so i mean if people really ask they go what is there that's actually here in bumfuck egypt there's really not much which i mean i guess that's why they call it in the middle of nowhere that's not really a destination of its own it's just kind of you know bumfuck egypt so, um, coming to you from the middle of nowhere, from a coffee bar, uh, and I guess, oh, and look, they even call this place what I thought it was. They call it a mirage, because it is a mirage in the desert. Uh, and it's the uh, Sarab, oh, it's, it's the Sarab Desert Mirage out here in the great section of this great country called bum fuck Egypt. I'll see you back at the hotel. So this is Amir. He's the owner of uh, the Sarab Desert Mirage. And I told Amir, I said, Amir, I'm going to make you a millionaire overnight. Okay. And uh, he thinks I'm kidding. <laughs> bum fuck Egypt t-shirts. That's okay. what you need. You're going to make a lot of money. So I hope He's a new subscriber too, so uh, hopefully he makes money. Okay. This trip never ceases to amaze me. We are headed across the Nile River now on a boat because our hotel tonight is basically uh, Alcatraz. The hotel has an island of its own. It's on the biggest island along the Nile, which is uh, Elephant Island, um, and it's called the Movenpick. Now they are a local hotel chain that also has quite a few number of river boats uh, as well. That about three of them we've walked through in this series so far, like the Moven Pick One, the Moven Pick Five, I think like the Moven Pick Twelve. They got a lot of boats, but they've actually got their own island here, uh, which they have a compound on, and they have a 24-hour-a-day ferry service that will get you to and from. You see, there's the ferryman right there. Maybe just for fun. We'll ride the ferry at 2 or 3 in the morning. I don't know. 
looks safe enough. And yeah, we're going to. Looks like there's a couple hotels, but this seems to be the luxury one straight ahead that we are riding to on the Movenpick Ferry right behind me. Never ceases to surprise me the uh, randomness of Egypt and the Nile River and this trip. Yeah, and this is the. Moven pick right here. Time to dock and check in. So we made it on the island and this video has already gone far enough off the rails, uh, but I can show you. We've got the Moven pick hotel right here. And yes, their entire walkway up to the hotel is lined with these sculptures right here. I've already dropped the F-bomb about seven times in this, so there's no way YouTube is actually going to monetize this. So let's just, let's go for broke. Um, they have giant penis statues that are lining your entire walk-in. You'll see the shaft, you'll see, well, I mean, hey, at least they're circumcised penis statues. I don't see a foreskin, but uh, yes, giant uh, phallic, penis statues walking all the way into the Moven Pick Hotel. Bravo, my friends. Bravo. It was not intentional in any, in any way, shape, or form, but consider me impressed. When we left the boat this morning, I left something in my cabin, and since we are still in Aswan, it was something little. It was a, a mount for a cell phone for a tripod, but they actually delivered it to the hotel. I am blown away so far. I mean, this is not a one-off, but I want to tell you, it's like the hotel and the boat have no relationship, but they knew where we were going. I am blown away with the service of the actual people that are working in Egypt. The fact that they got something that was in the room from the boat when they cleaned the cabin to the hotel we're staying in, which is across the other side of the Nile, consider me extremely impressed. See Mayfair, room 202, and I got my little... Uh, thing which probably fell out of a bag somewhere super duper in Preston that's why I left a significantly larger than uh, uh, recommended tip I was recommended to leave 25 bucks yeah I left the 25 bucks I was supposed to give but I gave my cabin guy more my dining room guy more the bar guy more and I'm not gonna lie in the bar my bill was also considerably less for four days a lot of drinking all those videos you saw and stuff I think I paid $30 total on my bill so it is what it is, but I'm super impressed by the service here uh, in Egypt as a whole, because that's a river cruise, which is completely unrelated to the hotel, working together. Two, oh, I don't know, I'm holding a camera, but if I can put the other one here. Two, one, two, very big thumbs up to the cooperation between two completely unrelated properties, unrelated things in Egypt. So we are now at the Movenpick Hotel, and uh, I do love that they do have a uh, modern tap key system compared to the boat. I also do love that they have uh, completely given up on this uh, energy switch because nobody likes these things anyway. <laughs> like, they, this is their key that they've put here, not my extra key I happen to carry. Now, this is on the other bank of the Nile River, but unfortunately, it doesn't look like we have a Nile view. But we do actually have, oh, we do actually have a balcony we can use. First hotel didn't have this. In fact, oh, we do have a slightly obstructed Nile view. There we go. And you can see, if you look out, you'll see that thing with the sail on it. Uh, that's a little bit of foreshadowing because in 40 minutes, four zero minutes, we are going to be sailing on a Faluka. So um, there was no lunch today. That was, uh, that was piss poor planning between you and me. I think that that tour should have included lunch because breakfast was at five o'clock in the morning and it's now 3.22, no, not 3.22, 4.22 p.m. And we haven't had lunch yet other than some chips and some junk food. Uh, but I'm gonna go grab a sandwich or a burger or something like that. And then after that, we are going to go on one of those guys right there, a Faluka, and we're gonna do a Faluka at sunset. I'll take you along a little bit on this, but I'm going to tell you where you're going to want, want to watch that is in the 360 video that's going to come out. See you there. 
So since the last time I spoke to you, uh, I scarfed down a club sandwich really quickly, and we are headed out at the Fanuka. Uh, I had a burger option, but uh, uh, we're going to go to McDonald's later. I'm going to take you along, uh, and this is the Fanuka. There is no engine here. I think that's what's unique. So you've got a sail, and you've got a rudder right down there. But you know what you don't have? You don't have an engine. So this is like an old Egyptian sailboat. It's called a Fanuka. So we're gonna go for Fanuka ride. I'll take you along on this camera, but I think your better experience is actually gonna be if you check out the 360 degree Fanuka ride, which should be posted pretty soon. And we are on the Fanuka. I'm seeing how well the noise canceling, uh, wind canceling microphone works there. You can kind of see coming by what we're on. It is very windy out here, but it is uh, quite, uh, quite pretty overall. This has no motor on it, so we are fully reliant on the wind and the speed we're going. So this is like a primitive, I, mean, I don't know if it's primitive, uh, <laughs> but this is like an Egyptian sailboat. And you can see the sail change. Uh, fortunately, the jib is a lot higher, so I'm not gonna get knocked out by the jib right now, but the ride does go pretty quick and it takes some pretty steep angles here. You can see that is uh, perfectly level and we are leveling down. How's the water temperature there? It's cold? It's good? Oh, there we go, here we go. Is a nice turn right there in the Fenuka. And we are on the Nile River, sailing under power that existed long before motors actually even existed um, on the Nile. It's really quite cool. Make sure you check out, make sure you check out the 360 video of this. That's going to drop a few days after this video because it's much bigger. But um, I've got my little 360 pole up there and got some awesome 360 video that's gonna drop of this. Now, we're gonna get off the Fanuka in about a half an hour time, and we are gonna go, we went yesterday to KFC. Today we are gonna go, did somebody say McDonald's? And our tour guide from Globus actually is the one who recommended McDonald's. So we're gonna go to McDonald's and check out McDonald's over here in Egypt. And after our Fallujah ride, what did somebody say? Somebody said McDonald's, and this is literally on the Nile River. It's, it's purely really cool and really insane that we're on the bank of the Nile River, and yesterday we were on the other bank and ran into a KFC. And uh, today we're on this bank. Oh, that looks good. We run into a McDonald's. Now, hopefully they got one of those machines that you can order from that's in English, and you just do, 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 and you go in, but like, this is where the river boats are, and here is where the McDonald's is, and unfortunately it is not, uh, not up to date enough to, yeah, yeah, it's not up to date enough to have those machines, but you know, maybe one day they'll have those machines where you can order, oh wait, hold on, hold on, something that they literally don't have in America anymore, I think is in this McDonald's. I legitimately think there is a play place in here. Now, I'm not intentionally going to show kids, but I will show yes. There is a play place. No kids, Sean? Yeah. It's a very tiny play place, but there's a basketball hoop and some other stuff like that. So, yeah, this is a McDonald's with the play place. And let's not lie, it's crowded as hell. And the prices, I can't, I can't really see yet, so I can't tell you if reasonable or not. But I'm going to order, like, the most strangest thing on the menu, most different from normal, um, and we'll see how it is. If you would have put waiting for my McDonald's food at sunset on the Nile River on my bingo card for this trip, I would not have predicted this, but um, <laughs> tonight is dinner on your own, and I'll tell you, dinner on your own has been kind of hit or miss. So. Um, McDonald's has consistent quality. So out of the 45 people, six of us went along with the uh, tour guide without an armed escort or anything like that because I feel this area as one is perfectly safe. We got our numbers right here. Uh, there's a number 18. Nothing but locals here. And uh, 
right on the Mississippi, not the Mississippi, sorry, right on the Nile River at sunset, we are going to have our Mickey D's. I, the, this, again, not, not anywhere on my bingo card, but uh, a pleasant surprise, and I'm trying everything. I got the chicken nuggets, I got the beef burger, and I got a chicken burger, uh, and some fries, and some barbecue sauce, and a Coke, just to kind of try everything right there. So I'll do a review, and I'll let you know how it all was as soon as it comes. So McDonald's was actually fantastic. Just like KFC, I actually think it was a little better than the US because there's a certain care that went into preparing everything. I had the spicy chicken, which was really, really good. Uh, I had the burger uh, uh, that was really, really quite nice. It had a nice cheese on it and everything like that. And I had the chicken nuggets and they had a barbecue sauce that was a little bit different than the barbecue sauce that they normally have at a McDonald's. But uh, you know, if, if you don't know, McDonald's is not a food company. I've been telling everybody today that it is a real estate company. So uh, just be aware, you know, they're, they're making money by uh, by selling real estate and leasing real estate to franchisees. But I'm on the streets of Aswan uh, just walking around after finishing McDonald's. And I'm going to head back to the hotel and kind of repack because tomorrow, early, early, early in the morning, we actually fly uh, back to Cairo. And then we got a day in Cairo. We're going to go visit memphis and the uh, delta where the water gets out of the nile river and uh take it from there and then fly back the next day but this is going to end day six here on the um escapes by globus with nile river cruise see you tomorrow for day seven well on the way back to the uh hotel the boat to the hotel the boat tell i wound up doing a little more exploring and got some of this uh I'm not sure what it is actually <laughs> it's nice the other side is english this says fanta apple i swear i've had this at world of coke before but uh this is fanta apple and we came across a little uh, store that's got wine and liquor and all kinds of other things uh and it's it's kind of cool uh my my el salvador friends my el salvador friends that's rum. 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 They're uh, they're trying to convince him to get some whiskey, rum, stuff like that. I've got my Fanta apple, and uh, I'm happy right here. I think we're headed back to the hotel now via the boat, but who knows what other fun exploring is going to come along our way. So it's interesting. You learn more and more as you ask questions. I know that's the way the world works, but. Uh, they are not supposed to sell alcohol to locals here. Uh, they can buy beer, but wine and hard liquor, they're not supposed to sell. So only the touristic places, only the tourist places actually have access to sell wine and hard liquor. Yes, locals can get beer, but that's why when we went in that shop, you know, we had to go through a couple things and all their liquor and wine was in a water box, uh, strangely, but uh, it's actually, really kind of interesting that like on the boat the rules don't apply but a lot of other tourist places can only sell alcohol after a certain hour of the day and only sell so many drinks um it's a little crazy and then it really can only sell to tourists or people that are traveling Ooh, i got the burps from the uh from the apple apple drink can only really sell to tourists and people that are traveling with the tourist